creeps and welcome to combo fango today we are talking about the kids are not all right we are here with the director and the stars of there's something wrong with the children we've got roxanne benjamin alicia wainwright amanda crew and carlos santos yay thank you guys for coming to talk about creepy kids yeah <laughs> i'm just watching your talk in the background yeah, he's like yay <laughs> yes! <laughs> Here for it. that was like very like kermit the frog kind of like dance but just the tail <laughs> amazing <laughs> nailed it <laughs> so roxanne uh we decided before we hit record that we were actually just gonna sit here and talk about how wonderful you are and you were like yeah let's go for it yeah you're fine with this oh god oh god <laughs> okay we'll start you off with an easy one tell us tell us i mean it's it's in the name it's in the title of the movie but can you tell us what it's about <laughs> um it's about two children or uh, two <laughs> couples who go away for the weekend one of them has kids and one of them doesn't and our kind of uh partying parents want to have a night to themselves and uh have our other couple watch their kids and then things go horribly awry because they are not not really kid people <laughs> um so when the kids go missing overnight and um <clears throat> come back um bad things start to happen <laughs> yeah the title really just says it all <laughs> it's it's right there it's right there for you you know yeah. what you're getting into in this one um for each of you guys what what was the main thing that drew you to this project are you just really all about you're like fuck yeah creepy kids i'm in or was there like a specific thing where you're like yes i gotta do this i can popcorn style carlos, if that's easier first, but, <laughs> carlos I'll, go I'll, for it for yeah. me, <laughs> well for me it was uh, i've never played a, a dad before i was never been allowed to play a parent so never allowed to <laughs> It was forbidden. Nobody believed me. As a and dad. he will never play one ever again. Ever again. <laughs> After this, that's it. That's it. Um, yeah. That's what this is all about. Mm. No, it was really exciting. Also, the uh, prospect of making a horror movie with Blumhouse, I think, was really exciting. So I was in it. I was in from the from the beginning. I was ready to go. I was really excited to be a part of it. Nice. All right. I've done horror projects with kids a lot and it was just fun to do one where they weren't actually mine um and to be like a not you know instinctually maternal person i think maternal characters you know contrary to carlos they give me the children all the time so it was nice to to play a character where motherhood and maternal instincts didn't come uh naturally so that was fun and then also yeah being able to work with uh Roxanne and Blumhouse and the cast it was kind of a no-brainer and it ended up being one of the best film experiences that I've had in a long time just because we all got along like ridiculously well <laughs> nice yeah so that would you say you're naturally a maternal person by nature well, as Amanda <laughs> will constantly tell everybody, I am a triple cancer, so it is it is out of my control how okay. I mother uh, things. It's I can't help it. Alicia <laughs> is. You, I mean, cottage core. She's like the queen of cottage core. But also, uh -huh. when we would go out for meals as a group, she was the one who would just order the food for the whole table. <laughs> which to me, I'm just like, oh, it's so nice to not even have to think about it. Yeah, it's like, such it a really relief. It's such a relief. Natural maternal sense to her. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. I love that. Mm. Uh, I got nothing on the triple placement, but as a cancer son, I, I have an appreciation for that. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I actually left that in the movie. There's a point where you guys are talking around the fire and you can hear Amanda saying, you're a triple cancer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like when I learned that about Alicia, I never stopped thinking about it. And I still think blows. about it. Yeah, I was just like, what does that even mean? <laughs> but then you experienced exactly what that means. She's yes. like, don't worry, you don't have to order. I get, I got it's you. You're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. All right, Amanda, what was, uh, what, aside from getting to work with a triple cancer, like what was the main, I mean, I didn't even know what <laughs> magic I was going to be jumping into <laughs> with that. Um, but no, just to piggyback onto what Alicia was saying, you know, it's just, I was really excited to get to work, um, with this cast. I'd worked with Zach before, um, but, um, it was such an incredible group and I had friends who'd worked with Roxanne and had said nothing but incredible things. And, even though I do play a mom in it, uh, she's not your most maternal mom. And something about that uh, audition scene where she's revealing some secrets, I was like, who's she? I want to know more about her. Uh, so she was really fun. 
<laughs> she's not a regular mom. She's a cool mom. <laughs> Up for debate. Um, uh, debatable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not a regular mom, period. Yeah. She also <laughs> likes to drink uh, gin and tonics on strenuous hikes. So there's. <laughs> yes. It was mommy juice all weekend. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where did you guys shoot this? Because I know we're centered on two couples that are off and they're like, we're going to fuck off for the weekend to the woods. But I mean, I guess you kind of got to do that in real life too. And you guys said you yeah. have a great rapport. So you kind of were doing that in real life. <laughs> yeah, we were outside of New Orleans, um, which I guess, it, you know, it could, it really feels like it could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing that really screams New Orleans about, I think, these cabins. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was down in down outside of New Orleans. They shoot uh, kind of all of these these movies in this series down there. So first it's time like shooting there, it was, it was fun. Nice. It's like a Blumhouse hub. <laughs> I yeah. think the the cool aspect about it too. I mean, cool depending on how you're feeling, <laughs> what time of day it is. But the um, the trailers were about a twenty minute. 15, 20 minute drive from location. So once you were on location, you were kind of there, mm -hmm. um, which did kind of force this camaraderie that we took to <laughs> very well, but you know, people weren't off in their trailers when they weren't shooting. Everyone was kind of just always hanging out. So it did kind of foster this sort of familial energy. And then it's really just one location and we shot in mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. spots within the location. So we were always just around each other. And I think we would get into these really in-depth conversations and, you know, collaborate on things we were doing for our characters. And so it always kind of felt very, um, fun and easy. And Roxanne's energy was very calm, cool, collected. And that energy trickled down to all of the departments and into the cast as well. Nice. A chill time in the woods until it is very not chill at all. Like the, opposite yeah. of chill, the least <laughs> chill time, <laughs> unchill children running amok. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. What was it like working with kids so much? Cause they're not kind of just like in the peripheral and like a few scenes they're like, they're, they're really in this. And it's really, a lot of this is up to them to like convey this very creepy ass energy. And I've got to say, they definitely hold their own in like the grand tradition of creepy kid movies. They're pretty fucking creepy. <laughs> Yeah, David's mom would apologize like constantly <laughs> for like his level of creepiness because he'd do like one take and I'd just look at her and be like, oh. and she'd be like, I'm so sorry. I don't know why he's like, and I was like, no, this is great. This is perfect. He was so, yeah, they, I think they had a blast. Brielle and, and David, they were, they were very pro uh, on set. The hardest thing, honestly, with working with them was scheduling. Um, mm -hmm. Once they were there and on set, like that was, it was phenomenal. But, uh, it's just part of any any production working with children is is the scheduling is always the kind of Rubik's cube of trying to make everything work, especially since we have so much nighttime stuff in yeah. the movie with them, and that that gets really tough because they were only like nine and ten years old at the time. Do you have just limited like really tiny blocks of time specifically for the yeah. night parts? Like, are we got to get this in like a couple yeah. hours? Get all this knocked out. Yeah, it's like they can only be there until like 8 p.m. on certain night weekdays and like once a week they can be there until like 10. So you're always fighting uh, your night time, how much time you have with them. And then they also have to break for school and they have to take breaks throughout as they should. They're children, <laughs> you know, um, so it's 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 very good for their welfare. But uh, for when it comes to like scheduling that, it's a, it's definitely like a tricky endeavor to try to fit everything within it. And you have to find ways to like block them where they can be out of the scene for chunks mm -hmm. of time while you're covering um, the other actors, which also I, I don't know how tough that makes it for you guys, too, because there'd be sometimes that they just had to leave, even though they were in the scene. I imagine well, then would they would suffer for no. you than me. But then they'd be swapped out with you know, um, other children wearing a wig and it was, but sometimes we didn't know. So they would just like <laughs> step on and you're like, <laughs> this is not, not my child. There is something wrong with the child. <laughs> that is not the <laughs> child. <laughs> yeah. Mystery solved. You just got to the yeah. bottom of it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Did any of you guys watch the rehearsal by chance? No, none. Nathan, I saw the first episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. The swapping of the kids with it. Yeah. <laughs> Where yeah, you're yeah, suddenly yeah. like, oh, he hello. I have to act like you're not a completely different face in front of me right now. That's what that reminded me of. That was a little bit of that. I should have auditioned for that. <laughs> you should have. Yes. You would have built up that dad resume, build it up. Oh. Get it going. 
<laughs> uh, what was like, was it interesting working opposite of kids, especially in a way, I mean, I guess as the parents, you still got to act nurturing towards them, but as like, you know, the other couple, like you start to realize there's something wrong with the children. So you're acting opposite these kids, but you're like starting to treat them like, oh, you're maybe evil little beings. Like, <laughs> I would say like, there were maybe a handful of scenes where my character was like intimately close to one of the kids deciphering that there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And pretty much after that scene, everything, I'm kind of separate from them because I'm running from them. <laughs> so it was actually smart. Like, mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't a lot of uh, overlap. My character pretty much thinks they're fine until a pretty pivotal event happens with one of the kids. And then one of them starts acting weird for me a little, little bit, and then it all turns for my character. So I, you know, it, it's just kind of wild because children, these kids particularly felt so unaffected by the material. So they would be like creepy and weird and like hissing. And then we'd cut and they'd be like jumping around and like right. playing and like, it's totally fine. And you're just like, wow, like you are really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how their characters were too, though. They're like, the hiss got me. I was like, oh God, what was that? <laughs> but like the evil little hiss and like the like demonic stare and then being like oh hi mom skipping off like by the fire but then I'm like oh god that's so creepy so I think it like it makes it worse to be creepy and then like just going off to play again I'm like something about this like Ugh. it's like chilling <laughs> Mm -hmm. but, I mean, would you would, I think you would prefer that over a child that uh, can you really creep people <laughs> when they say cut? Yeah, that's not, that's not good. A kid that's just, you can't tell if they're really method or if like, maybe they're actually demonic. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with that child. That one's pretty good. <laughs> Other one, maybe okay, but that one, eh, questionable. <laughs> Roxanne, did you give them any specific like references or like what, what did you talk to them about to convey that kind of like creepiness? Or have them watch other evil child movies or anything? No, like that. I didn't have them watching anything um, for sure. And there, I feel like there was definitely some sensitive material that we kind of kept them away from mm -hmm. after the table read. Um, yeah, I, it's it's hard to say because it's I I feel like I watch every performance like take by take and. Mm -hmm. And I'm always looking at like micro beats. So I'm going in and, and talking about like very small adjustments most of the time. Um, so it, it's hard to say if there was anything like off the bat that I was like, try to be this, mm -hmm. you know, I think they were really dialed in with what the vibe was and, and what it was that like their job was when they were like possessed um, <laughs> in a way. So, so they didn't really, I mean, that's the thing. They didn't really need a, a lot of direction for that part. Mm -hmm. for that's the, also like, scary. Movie. Okay. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, for that part of the movie. Um, I think I talked to them more about maybe some of like the emotional beats before then, or, or, mm -hmm. you know, just what they might be feeling like, okay, it's late. Your parents are leaving like this kind of thing. Um, yeah. The normal kid stuff, directing them on that. Normal kid, the demonic yeah. shit. Like, no, they had to that down. They, got like, down. They, didn't need, they didn't need me at all. <laughs> oh my God. But to be honest, I mean, I think that would be my dream as a kid. It's my dream now, but as like a kid, if I was like eight years old and they're like, all right, you're going to be a creepy little fucker. And like, you're like maybe possessed. I'd be like, yes, this is fantastic. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they were really good and not just like, there's like creepy and being like, oh, I'm overtly creepy. But they did this very like menacing, like, fucking with you like manipulative kind of look and that was the creepy part to me it's like I'm yeah. fucking with you and no one else sees it but I'm definitely zoned in on you and I'm fucking with you and that part to me was the most chilling I think I did give them some references for that for like when they're messing with Zach because with everyone else they're just kind of like I'm fine I'm hanging out mm -hmm. and uh with him it was kind of just like the you know it's like you're poking at your little sister or your little brother like I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Like <laughs> it's you can't get mad. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't get mad. I'm not doing anything like that kind of energy. Um, and so I think they were really good at like checking in with each other too within mm -hmm. scenes. There's some really fun moments, I think, between the two of them, like that you can see they're messing with him and he knows it, but he can't call them on it. So they had a great chemistry, very like brother sister yeah. vibes for sure. Yeah. yeah. As someone with a, an annoying little brother, like very much got that vibe down. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have any favorite creepy kid movies? Did you guys watch anything in preparation? Or just a fan in general of creepy kid movies? 
you know, I just walked around Sunset Boulevard and I got creepiness from just the, the <laughs> energy. <laughs> just being out, just existing yeah. on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's still pretty good. I could extrapolate that to, to children. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, what's on Sunset Boulevard? Have you, you been? Have you, you don't want to know. know. It's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Not the same walking than driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, General Sunset. I... <laughs> I got, um, they did, you know, Hollywood forever has uh movie screenings. And I just, uh, recently saw insidious there and, you know, I do feel like a lot of these kid, like there's something really messed up about a kid that is in a coma <laughs> doing things, um, you know, because you like her, your natural instinct as the mother character is to protect him, but like something's not okay with him. And, and he's something weird, you know, especially if the other kid is like, you know, he's awake at night or I think he's, you know what I mean? Like I, I found that movie to be like a pretty creepy kid movie. Um, so <laughs> nice <laughs> it's and a good night movie. mommy oh good, good night mommy that's good one. and uh the good son the good, good son that's good classic son. nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah if you've seen the new orphan kills it's also super or the second orphan movie it's also really good evil kid stuff happening um that yeah. one surprised me for sure because i feel like they could have just gone one way with it and just kind of dialed it in and was like all right this mm -hmm. is here's a sequel to this and then it just kind of went off the rails in a totally different direction i was like what yeah. is happening i'm like okay they didn't take the easy way out with it they just went bonkers and i appreciate it <laughs> yeah I, I do appreciate when a when a movie just goes off the rails and goes for it yes i think we're getting a lot more of that i think we're coming into like a, a bonkers renaissance which i'm like here yeah. for yeah I, I i am a fan of that <laughs> amanda you got any creepy kid movies on your repertoire you, that you like to revisit snuggle up with at night <laughs> i'm like completely drawing a blank on creepy children but i do think it's it's just because children represent such innocence that mm -hmm. they literally don't have to do much to just kind of creep you out if it's just like a look and you're just like but then i think kids sometimes can be that way just normally because you expect them just to be purely innocent and then they can do something really mischievous and you're like you little shit <laughs> um, <laughs> we love the children <laughs> this movie in particular i think it's because they do that very like it's just like such like they're like picking at you kind of thing and i'm like I, I i love children i'm a very nurturing person i've worked a lot with kids and i enjoy it but in this movie i was like i would punch that little fucker straight in the face like at certain <laughs> at certain points and i realized like would get me in a lot of trouble with everyone around me because no one else would know what the fuck is going on and i'd just be the crazy girl punching kids but there's like multiple moments where I'm like i'd punch that little fucker like bam right in the nose like immediately <laughs> i wouldn't really punch a kid but you know there's there's reasons there's 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 it's justified here <laughs> it is very vindicating that my character gets to have some sort of you know tactile <laughs> Uh, uh revenge with the children <laughs> yeah. so. i like tactile revenge i'm gonna rephrase i would not punch a child in the face I mean, yeah. <laughs> tactile <laughs> revenge. someone's gonna use that lift that clip and just use that audio of me being like i'd punch a kid in the face <laughs> tactile revenge we gotta work with our uh phrasing <laughs> do any of you guys have kids at home this is my child yeah okay yeah. <laughs> I, I just wonder if it would be creepier to like come home to a kid at night when you're working on this or, or at least when you're reading the script or something at first and being introduced to this concept of creepy kids just going to be giving a little bit of side eye anytime they make a like an off face or something you're like oh we good we good you all right <laughs> um it, we're getting into the holiday season I'm just curious you guys have any favorite holiday horror movies mm. gremlins yeah mm -hmm. all right <laughs> solid i will say i don't i don't know that one is jumping off the top of my head <laughs> like, okay it's like it's like i'm like die hard is the, like, the, the first, it's like the oh, first horror it's the first christmas movie that came to mind but i mean really uh, you frost. can say, say that again jack frost isn't that one of the jack frost oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is something jack though frost. about christmas movies where they like really kind of you know, 
wash it with the machine of like families are perfect and this is the best time of the year and there's something kind of disturbing about that too of just kind of like everyone's so happy it's like really like a maniacal like kind of like stepford wives yeah exactly yeah. like I, we love this we're so happy like there's something unhinged a little bit like just beneath the surface <laughs> i was actually singing uh a christmas song this morning and to my husband and because i'm obsessed with christmas music i grew up with just like music from like the 50s and he's just like this music is terrifying like, what is <laughs> like i was singing the song like i'm the happiest christmas tree like who wrote this like what is going on like it's just this like intense like ha, 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 he, he, he. it's like I forgot your Christmas obsession yeah so when we <laughs> shot this movie again this time last year yep. we were in this hotel which I won't get into very much but Amanda did her very best to turn that hotel into her Christmas miracle with <laughs> lights and a tree right you oh yeah them? I bought I bought a lot of decorations and just really jazzed my room up and it did it did it did work it did, did work good job I brought I brought the cheer to the room. I love that. Did you like barge into the door singing that song though? With with the eyes <laughs> not wide, like I'm a happy Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you're like, this song is really creepy, but then you present it like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's that's pretty creepy. <laughs> it is though. If you listen to it, you're like, what is going on? And a lot of the Christmas songs from like the 50s and 40, like it is really it is weird. Um, and I've never thought about that until my husband who didn't grow up with that started listening to them with me. And he's like, what is happening? This is <laughs> is that why I'm drawn to those? Cause there's just like this level of like, it's something is weird here. So there's something a little off and I'm like, these are the Christmas jams. It's like a weird fifties housewife, like Valium mania, <laughs> yeah. like all of it. Yeah. Is that what you had just like blaring, like as you're running around the hotel and like Christmas buying it? Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it was a fun time at the hotel. <laughs> Did anything weird happen at the hotel? I mean, aside, well, like, <laughs> I was like you know time. what I just, you know what I just flashed to was the plunger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's like, we could do a whole movie just about the hotel and our yeah. experience. We could do a it side was... Zoom interview about just yeah. that. There's the 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 something wrong with the hotel. <laughs> there oh. is something wrong with the hotel. Hotel hell, hotel hell version. Yeah. We, we trauma bonded over that. Yeah. Oh my God. Really, was... I think they did it on purpose to get us to come together. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it really yeah. did. It, it, did. Work. it was a teamwork exercise. <laughs> Yeah, it was very yeah. method. It was very like, yeah. Very yeah. method. Artsy. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Roxanne, Motel Hell is one of my absolute all-time favorites. So now I need you to do like your spin on it. There's something wrong with the hotel meets Motel Hell and bam. And you guys all have to come back for that. And I think I would 100% no. watch that movie. <laughs> no. It would be like a PTSD, like relived oh experience. God. Absolutely yeah. not. But we'll do I it in like a resort. It that, is a, it's a, it's a motel. It's like a, you know, resort hell versus yes 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 yeah. give me the horror white lotus and I'll it's be again, yeah because you've got to yeah. juxtapose right you can't just like be like obviously there's something wrong with this hotel and then that and then <laughs> oh yeah surprise there's something wrong now you got a white lotus it maybe everything's fine but surprise it's not so there you go <laughs> yeah there's more breakfast items than you ordered that came to your room oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh no i got so much extra grapefruit this is this is a nightmare yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you guys would like to share uh, with us before we go? Social security numbers, mother's maiden names, uh, just off the top of my head is what's coming to me now. <laughs> well, I just want to say I really love your enthusiasm for the genre. And I think your questions were really fun. And like, obviously, you're a big fan of Roxanne's and the film. And so thank you for taking the time to chat with us. And um I hope everyone who's watching this interview sees the film. Yay. Oh my God. That was really, really nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate this it. This is the triple cancer. Triple cancer. Oh, you just triple cancered me. I just got yeah. triple <laughs> cancer. And I, I, I it's going to like I, the rest of the day, I'm going to be like floating through the day. <laughs> oh. Amazing. <laughs> well, it's Are the you guys, truth, but thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> This was a lot of fun. Like I said, I love creepy kids. So you guys are going to love it too. There's something wrong with the children. Find out what the fuck exactly that is January 17th. Yay.